Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome all AMD pre-built by MSI known as the Aegis ZS. It's also known as the 5DS 263US. I completely understand that a lot of my viewers would rather build a machine, but there are people out there that just don't have the time or the know-how to get something put together and would rather buy something that works right out of the box. And on paper, this actually looks like a really nice little setup. We've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a water-cooled 5800X, and a Radeon 6700 XT. So obviously, these pre-built gaming machines do come with Windows pre-installed, but by the end of this video, we will be testing out Linux using SteamOS 3.0, the same operating system that's running on the Steam Deck. And since we've got an all-AMD build here, we should be getting some pretty decent performance with that operating system. But before we jump into everything, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main the main reason that I use URCD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here, I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So when it comes to the specs for that CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, 8 cores, 16 threads with a max clock up to 4.7 GHz. Really great Zen 3 CPU. We've got 16 GB of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz, a 1TB M.2 NVMe SSD. The GPU is that Radeon 6700 XT with 12 GB of VRAM. It does have Wi-Fi 5 built in, and these come pre-installed with Windows 11. We're going to be running a few PC games in Windows 11. We'll also test out some high-end emulators. We'll run some benchmarks, and then we'll move over to Linux to see how it performs. Alright, so here we have Forza Horizon 5, and I will move over to my game capture in just a second, but I wanted to show this off just running right on the bench here. We're at 1440p, ultra settings, and we're getting an average of 148 FPS. No resolution scale on whatsoever, and we've got that preset of ultra. Of course, this is definitely going to run at 4K over 60. I can actually get an average of around 82 FPS Ultra 4K out of this machine. But the 6700 XT is really tailored towards 1440p gaming. When it comes to games like this, very highly optimized games or esports games, 4K shouldn't really be an issue with this card paired up with the 5800X like we have here in this MSI machine. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And the first one here is Geekbench 5. Single core, 1603, multi, 8331. Looking really good here, and it really comes down to having those Zen 3 cores. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Fire Strike with a total score of 29,931. And finally, Time Spy with a very respectable 12,183. So just judging by the scores here, we should be getting some really good 1440p gaming out of this machine. And like I mentioned, when it comes to older AAA titles or esports games, 4K should not be an issue for this setup. This game I wanted to test was Halo Infinite. Unfortunately, I forgot to turn my game capture audio on, so this one's silent. But when it comes to the settings, we're at Ultra 1440p. And by the end of this run, I got an average of 97 FPS. Looking really good, and I don't have any resolution scale going on at all. Here's MK11 4K very high settings, which is basically ultra for this game, and I kind of expected it to. This is a very well optimized game. I also tested Injustice 2, another great fighting game. 4K very high settings, and I'm sure this is going to run the Street Fighter games at 4K locked at 60 all day long. Here's God of War, 1440p, ultra settings, and I thought I would get a little more out of this. I mean, it's totally playable like this, we're over 60, but I only got an average of 74 FPS. Keep in mind, this is without FSR on, and you could go ahead and set FSR 2.0 to ultra quality or quality and get around 100 FPS out of this game, but I just wanted to leave it at those stock settings. 
And the final PC game on Windows we're going to be testing here is Elden Ring, and it handles it just fine, maximum settings 1440p. I also tested this at 4K, maximum settings, and I did get some dips down into the mid 50s, so if you wanted to run this at 4K on this machine, I would highly recommend setting it to high. So yeah, going into this, I really didn't have any doubts that we'd be able to run these AAA games really well at 1440p, but now I want to test a little bit of emulation in Windows, and then we're going to move over to Linux. Here we have some Wii U using the SimU emulator, Bayonetta 2, and I'm upscaled to 1440p using the Vulcan back in. Very smooth, 60 FPS, and when it comes to something like Breath of the Wild, you can also run it like this just fine, but I personally like playing that game at 30 FPS, and it'll handle it at 4K 30. Next up, we've got some Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia, and there's a lot of games that'll run at full speed on this, but I threw one of the harder ones to emulate at it right off the bat, and that was Red Dead. I didn't turn V-Sync off because I knew that the 5800X was still even going to struggle at 30 FPS. When it comes down to it, this is just a really hard one to run. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that that 5800X is boosting just fine. And we're pulling around 75 watts trying to run this at 30 FPS. The best performance that I've seen out of this emulator is on Alder Lake, be it an i5 or an i7. But when it comes to PS3 using RPCS3, we've got more than enough power to push this at 4K. So you gotta keep in mind that there are some games that aren't very compatible with the emulator yet. So if you take a look at their website, you can check out their compatibility list. As long as it says playable, then you should be able to run it just fine. 1440 to 4K. And a lot of you already know that Skate 3 is a harder one to emulate. Loves those extra cores, high clocks, and extra threads. And in my opinion, the 5800X is one of the best CPUs you can use with this emulator right now. So we've got some really great AAA gaming performance, awesome emulation performance, at least in Windows, but now it's time to test out Linux. So what I have here is an operating system known as Hollow ISO. It's basically the same operating system that's running on the Steam Deck. It might look very familiar. And if I scroll down here, you can see that we're on this system here with the 5800X, that 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, And really, the only reason I ran this instead of something like Manjaro is because I've been messing around with this for the last few days on a lot of different systems, and I just really wanted to see how it performed. There's not much that I haven't been able to run that doesn't run at full speed. We do have that performance overlay, system-wide FSR, and I recently did a full install tutorial, so if you're interested in checking that out, I will leave a link in the description. You can run this on your laptop, mini PC, x86 handheld, and desktop, as you see here. So yeah, I mean, if you did want to install another M.2 drive and install a Linux distro on it, you could definitely get some really great gaming out of the way. Or if you just want to go with Linux right off the bat, everything in this PC is function with this operating system, from the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the USBs, USB Type-C, and it just works out really well. And here we have Cyberpunk, we're at high settings. And, uh, you know, sometimes with different setups, I do get better performance with Cyberpunk 2077 and Linux. But on this machine here, I'm not seeing the kind of performance that I was expecting out of this, given the other systems that I've tested on Linux with this game. And it could come down to driver compatibility issues with this operating system. I'm pretty sure I would get better performance out of this whole machine if I was running Manjaro with the updated Mesa drivers. Overall, it's a solid performing pre-built gaming PC. As you saw, we can run Windows, great for AAA gaming, awesome emulation, and if you did want to install Linux, you could just install a secondary drive and run it from there. That way you can mess around with it and not have to overwrite your Windows installation. I thought it was a bit odd that they added a 120mm AIO to this instead of like a 240 with a 5800X, but the temps weren't really that bad at all. At idle, it averages 38 degrees Celsius, Average gaming through all of my tests with the PC games and emulation was only 69 degrees Celsius. And the maximum that this hit while running Cinebench for 10 minutes straight was 88. So 88 is getting a bit up there. And that 120 millimeter fan was definitely kicking, but it didn't hit thermal throttle. And under everyday normal usage, you'll never see those kind of temps. So this 120 millimeter AIO did a really good job with the 5800X. So if you're the kind of person that just doesn't want to go through building a PC, then this is something that I could recommend. And if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.